Welcome to As the Story Grows. I'm Brian Patton. Today we welcome Colby Kerrigan and Dalton Kennerly from Levels to the podcast. Levels will release their new EP, Pulse, this Friday on Sharp Tone Records. The guys talk about how, where they grew up, shaped their musical experiences, the long road to get Colby in the band, navigating a lineup change during lockdowns, being excited to reintroduce themselves to the world, and more. Thank you for checking out this episode of As the Story Grows. You can find links to hang out on the podcast's Discord server, join the mailing list on Substack, or support the show on Patreon in the show notes or at asthestorygrows.com. And as always, if you aren't yet subscribed to the podcast, go ahead and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform of choice. Enjoy today's chat with Colby and Dalton from Levels. I like your background. Yeah, you got a cool setup in there. It's pretty nice. It's a little messy over here, but I'm going to one day put away all the stuff. My kids just are like, here you go. I'm just like, yeah, okay, thank you. <laughs> the same way, man. There's nice. always just random shit laying around. Yeah, yeah. You guys uh, in Arkansas, right? Yeah. Where yeah. in Arkansas? Uh, technically, Bella Vista, but uh, Fayetteville is probably more notable. Okay. The place. It's where the Razorbacks are from. If people are into football, it's usually what I tell them. Nice. <laughs> nice. Is that where you grew up? No, I grew up in central Arkansas, um, okay. about three and a half, four hours from here. Okay. And then Colby is, fr- you can say. And then I'm I'm from Connecticut, but I've, I'm have i a gypsy man. I've moved around so much. I uh born and raised in Connecticut for 19 years, and then I moved uh-huh. to Greenville, South Carolina. And then um, I lived there for 12 years. And then I moved out to the beach in Charleston, South Carolina. I lived there for two years. Now I'm here for a little bit. And, uh, and then I go <laughs> And then I go back to Greenville, South Carolina, literally in three days. So it's been a fun ride. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Why the movie? Um, I don't know. That's a good question. I just, I just love to, I just love to move. <laughs> I just love <laughs> to be on the move. Yeah, I'm kind of, kind of crazy in that way. Nice, nice. What was growing up like for each of you? Well, you want to go first? You want me to go first? Sure. I, 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 <laughs> what was growing up like? Uh, yeah. It was. It was awesome. I um, had a pretty big friend group when I was growing up. I was into tons of sports, always, always hanging out with the friends and, you know, going over their houses and and growing up playing baseball, basketball, football, you name it. Um, Had a good childhood, mom and dad, bunch of siblings, Um, went to a ton of shows when I was young, just because my dad was a huge metalhead. And uh, that's kind of how him and, uh, that's how uh, my, my older brother and I got into it. We went to like Lincoln Park shows. And uh, we, I think my first show ever was um, Lincoln Park, Hoobastank, POD. Oh, man. And somebody else. I forgot who it was. But that was when I was like, actually, no, that wasn't my first show. But that was like my first like industry show, right? Like my first show was in sync. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dang. Dude, that's that's such a cool first show, though. Yeah, I don't know if that really counts as show. <laughs> I don't regret it at all. It's great. That's such a cool first show, though. But um, but yeah, I had a I had a pretty traditional upbringing. Nothing too you know crazy. Um, mom and dad ended up splitting in two thousand three, but was still super loved by both parents. Yeah. Um, we had everything we needed. Uh, I had a pretty big friend group and um, was a horrible student. Always passed by the skin of my teeth. Never wanted to be in school. Didn't care about it whatsoever. Knew at a young age that uh, for some reason I hated it. Didn't care about math, science, or anything. I actually didn't mind history. History was cool to learn about. That's where him and I connect because we're both kind of history buffs. Him oh, yeah. wa- him way more than me, though. <laughs> um, and then, um, yeah, the upbringing was super cool. It was good. It was fun. Nice. Do you have a specific interest in history or just a general? Uh, I honestly just like like bullet notes i just like learning things about okay. history points like like him 
I like that more ancient history and like what could have happened that we don't really know about sort of things. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. I like, I like history and I can talk about it for a few minutes and it's super intriguing to me, but, but he can go down the wormhole for days and days and days nice. and just nerd out, man. Nice. Nice. I was much more like raised in the country playing a lot outside, lots of dirt digging. Nice. Um, Kind of like mix between farm life and construction life. Um, I mean, really, lots of fun times. Uh, just a lot of outdoorsy stuff. Um, lots of four wheeler riding on infinite trails. I feel like any, every day I got back home from school, I would just head out on the four wheeler through all the trails, and that was like a big part of my childhood. <laughs> yeah. And then got into metal because some kid at school, I think, showed me suicide silence and i did not understand at the time <laughs> what was going on and then for some reason it just uh it like it, re it resonated with me later on like after i sat on it for a while i just found myself wanting to go back to uh listening to metal music and so it kind of i guess it kind of found me in a way <laughs> yeah. there are so many people i've talked to who like the first time they hear like slipknot or like yeah suicide silence they're like nope nope what the fuck is that sound coming yeah. out of my mouth? Yeah. And then they're like, oh no, I get it. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. It's you know, weird because it like leaves a weird taste in your mouth, and then you're like, yo, that was weird. And then you're like, but why am I craving it? You're like, yeah. <laughs> it just like in infected me. And then you go back and you listen, and you're like, okay, I actually do love this. Yeah. Like that's how it was for me with um I was walking through uh, I don't know if you guys have the the store FYE out mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Or what you do. What was FYE before it was FYE? It was a different store. I forgot what it was called. I always remember it as FYE. There was it was a different store, but <laughs> anyways, my mom took me to a um, let's just call it FYE yeah. uh, store one time when I was like, God, I had to be, I had to be ten, mm -hmm. ten or ten or eleven, and I um, I came across this this album, and it was just dark and you know, the, the lettering on it was badass to me. And I, I was like, what, what is this? So I went over to the, the little headphone thing and I brought that CD and I scanned it and I just put my, put the headphones on and it was just like breakdown after breakdown. And this guy was screaming on it. And I was like, I've never heard anything like this. This is so intriguing. It happened to be barrier dead. The oh, band wow. barrier dead. Yeah. That's the first band that I like really got into metal with. And then from there on, it was, you know, bullet from my valentine as i lay dying like that whole era haste the day yeah. Dude, that's crazy because i went and saw before i even listened to any kind of screaming in music i went to a five finger death punch concert when i was probably <laughs> in like middle wow. school middle school and bury your dead was on that tour what wow. and that was the first, that was like the first uh like screaming really heavy band that i'd heard that's and it was so live crazy but yeah it was bury your dead funny. they were an early adopter for me too Nice. Nice. What were, once you got into like metal, hardcore, metalcore, whatever, like what was the local scenes like for you? Were there like good local scenes where you're going to shows and seeing bands all the time? At the time, it didn't feel like it. Um, throughout middle school and high school, it felt like it was slim pickings. But then there was a, a stint of a couple of years, um, probably right around 2012, 2013. Um, maybe even up to like 2016 where there was no shows. And so in hindsight, it was really good when I was in middle school and high school. Um, but you know, obviously not as, not as great as like the bigger markets around us, like, uh, Dallas or St. Louis or, um, Nashville, like Little Rock, Arkansas really didn't get stopped by a whole lot. And there was only yeah. a couple, there was like a handful of small venues that, the the mid-sized metal bands would even come play at so it's it's kind of slim pickings but I'm, I'm sure there was a lot more it was a lot more happening where colby's from yeah yeah so i grew up in connecticut where metal was like right. at the time yeah uh massachusetts connecticut like yeah, that whole new england scene just popped yeah. up right so i grew up in the middle of that and i actually knew um i didn't know him super well but brian willie from currents okay uh, he, so the vocalist, he was always in bands. I was always in bands. Our bands played like, you know, back and forth at different venues and whatnot there. Uh, that's also where I think Boundaries is from. 
I think Boundaries is from there. Yeah. I'm not too familiar with their band. I just know that they're from there. Uh, and then a couple other bands. But yeah, I mean, the scene, not particularly like in my school. Like in my school, it was super niche. Like I was one of like maybe 10 metalheads. And, uh, but I didn't like, I didn't always dress and act like it. Right. So like back then when metal was like really hitting the scene, you had to like dress like it and like have the piercings and the yeah. pants and all that, you know, just to be cool and to be like, you know, just to be respected with it. But I, I was just kind of more the, like the Hollister guy that was <laughs> metal. And then, and then I found my, and then I really found my, um, you know, I found my tribe. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, growing up for me, we always went to shows. I mean, every single time one of our favorite bands collectively between my brother, my dad and myself, we would always go see shows. I mean, I, I grew up, God, my dad would probably know better, but we probably went to 200 concerts by the time I was 18 years old. So, I mean, we were just going to them like, like left and right. So where I was from, I was blessed because we got to go all the time and all the biggest bands stopped, mm. you know an hour away from my house, not even 30 minutes sometimes just yeah. pretty much in our backyard. And so I got to, I was privileged. I got to, I got to grow up seeing a lot of them. It was a ton of Godsmack and shine down shows. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that seems to be what came through Arkansas a lot. It was like all those, those legacy bands. Mm -hmm. That's what I like to call them. That's funny. That's right. Yeah. When Brian was on the podcast, he talked about Connecticut and it was like split in half where half was like Massachusetts, the New England scene and the other half was New York. <laughs> so, yeah, 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 absolutely. Jesus. I almost mentioned New York because the scene, the scenes were a little bit different, yeah. but, but they were different. I mean, they were kind of polarizing at some points, but they were definitely like super active. Yeah. I'm pretty sure like when I was growing up there, we probably had one of the top three most active like metal scenes, like excluding uh, what Texas, Ohio was also on the map, yeah, which was Ohio great. at that time. Yeah, <laughs> popped off though. Like, yeah, like, may I? Miss May I? You had the uh, I think the word alive started there. Like moths started there. Uh, attack, attack! Tons yeah, of yeah, them. yeah. yeah. The Devil wears Prada. Like, Prada, Prada, yeah, yeah. 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 So they were a hotbed for a we're, while. We're all like competing. In the, yeah. <laughs> like the uh, yeah, it was it was cool, man. Growing yeah. up there, I, I'm very fortunate to have grown up there. It's funny that I I wanted to move out of there so much, but um, <laughs> but it's it's I was very fortunate in the music aspect to grow yeah. up there for sure. Yeah. Yeah, with the Arkansas scene, I'm just like, I don't know, what bands are from Arkansas? Like Evan Us, <laughs> Levels, Evanescence. Yeah, Living Sacrifice, right? Like <laughs> Christian Metal, right? <laughs> yes. Uh, no. Talk to me about uh, Levels, how this band gets started. Um, It all started with me, Jagger, our guitar player, Jacob, our bass player, and our old guitar player, Rob, um, or, or yeah, our, our other guitar player that we used to have. Um, we were all in college together at the same in the same city in Conway, Arkansas, and we had all been in bands that had played shows together, and so we just knew of each other through the scene. And um, my original intention with Levels, it was me and Rob, uh, our ex guitar player that started Levels, and our intention was. Um, well, I guess even when I found Rob, he was in this band that had played some pretty big shows and he had like won some contests to play on stage with, um, all, all that remains. remains, all that remains. And so, uh, I was like, holy shit, this guy's an incredible guitar player. And I was in high school at the time. And, uh, I, in my head, I wanted to start like a local super group of people. So I was like looking at all the bands and thinking to myself, okay, who's the best musician out of each one of these Arkansas local bands. And, uh, it just so happened to be that, uh, we had all, we all had moved from our hometowns to this one city to all go to college together. And so I found this group of guys and that's really the foundation of where it all started. Um, uh, me and Rob, we found Jagger and then when we went on our first tour together, um, we needed a bass player. And Jacob, he didn't play bass. He played guitar. It's the classic story yeah. of the, the old switch over. The old uh, coming of age bassist story. Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> we got Jacob in there on the first tour. And that's when he became an official member nice. back in 2016. Um, and then I'm skipping over like vast amounts of information, but sure. just to get to the point, uh, we had an other vocalist, Jake, who was a original founder of the band as well. And, uh, he, he left because life was just taking him in a different direction with his, with his, uh, motivations and 
goals. And so he moved out to Georgia and I think he's in um, like North Raleigh, Carolina, Raleigh, North Carolina. He's in Raleigh now, Raleigh. Yes. but uh, we still freaking love Jake. Like he, he did so much the time that he was with us and really helped us get a, a good jump on everything. Great foundational start. War- warmly welcomed me into the band has, yeah. has been such a sweetheart and he's been unbelievably supportive for and, us. And we got Colby in the band in 2020 and then yeah, that's when we really pivoted to the sound that you hear now. Um, that was like the, a brand new start for us, really. Like we could, we honestly could have changed the band name at that point because we were like, "All right, guys, let's turn the key here and really get this yeah. thing rolling." So um, that's that's in a nutshell how it all began. Nice. nice. Where'd the name come from? Um, it was kind of just like a in a pool of thought of many random names that we were thinking of at the time. I I remember specifically being in my dorm room in college with a couple of friends of mine. And, you know, there was all these plural band names that bands had that you heard of, uh, like, you know, currents volumes, uh, (laughs) help me out here. What are some other plural band names? Oh God. Um, there's a whole bunch of them out there. Yeah. You know, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I guess around that time, it was just like, damn, levels isn't taken because like all <laughs> the names had been taken. And yeah. so we were looking at socials and we were kind of doing some research and development of just like what is available, like what social medias can we grab? What uh, dot coms can we grab and stuff like that? And so we we're kind of approaching it from a business perspective. And I mean, it's really, it kind of like, the name stuck and then it kind of like got its meaning after the fact, because with levels like and everything that we do, there quite literally is levels to it, like to all the different things that we do um, at any given point in time. So it, it was, it started as just a fun sounding cool name yeah. to me and a couple of friends in college in our dorm room, just fucking jotting stuff down <laughs> on a whiteboard. And it's, uh, sprouted into this what it is now <laughs> nice nice colby you joined in 2020 what led you from south carolina to this band in arkansas especially during the pandemic <laughs> well man it's it's a it's a crazy pretty crazy story that we actually were able to connect um <clears throat> so just a brief history of myself i was in local bands and stuff when i moved uh from connecticut to south carolina i started i think two or three different ones um and then did that for like five or six years. And then in 2017, I was kind of broke, busted and disgusted with the, with the scene. I didn't want, you know, I couldn't really find anybody that was like as dedicated as I was, you know? (laughs) And so I just kind of, you know, put the mic down for, for a good three years. And I, and I had a, I had a friend, I said, um, that's in a band, it's called fractured frames. They're out of North Carolina. My buddy, my buddy, Brett, but, uh, I told him, I said, look, man, I'm going to put it down for a little bit. And if you, you know, if you see a, if, of anything that I might fit in, um, let me know. Cause he's, he's the guy, like Mm -hmm. the band guy, he always, he's always in the know he's at the cutting edge of every, everything in the scene. So a couple years went by and these guys put out a, uh, a tour flyer needing a vocalist and a couple of their people, uh, connected us. And I guess I didn't see the post for a month. So they, they, they tagged, I think it was myself in it, but I was like very spotty on social media back then. Like, um, I mean, specifically Facebook. So I didn't get to see the post for a month. And then I realized that Dalton had also messaged me, uh, a, a month, like prior to when I actually noticed it, but it got caught up in my request messages on, on Facebook. So I didn't see it. So one day I'm, I'm at work on my lunch break and, uh, and in the meantime, let me preface with the fact that we are getting these vocal submissions and nothing's hitting. We're just like going <laughs> through them and we're like, damn, man, I don't think everybody ever- sucks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so in the meantime, all that's going on and, and I just pull over to the side of the road one day and I'm like, oh my God, these guys hit me up and <laughs> it's been like 29 days ago. Oh my God. There's no way that this position's still going to be there. <laughs> 
I, I just messaged him back. I was like, Hey man, so sorry. I didn't even see, I didn't even know you messaged me. I was like, is the position still available? And he got back to me within what, like an hour, if that, and he was like, yeah, man, of course it's still, it's still available. I was like, Oh my goodness. So we just, we hit the ground running. He was like, we would love for you to do a tryout. And I was like, Oh my gosh. So ended up doing a tryout. How did that go? How, like, how, how did you get the tryout recorded and all that? Oh, so, <laughs> so I, so wait, you talk about the story, like leading up to the tryout or just like how you got, how you made it happen. So I went up to uh, my buddies in North Carolina, the fracture frames guys. And I, and I recorded my, my um my tryout with them however but it was weird because i kind of put them in a weird position i ended up getting an injury in my ribs uh oh. and i couldn't do the tryout for like two weeks so it looked really suspect to them because yeah, they were yeah. like, like oh this guy's bullshit yeah it was <laughs> i legitimately had an injury oh, and I, man. I, I didn't want to tell the guys because i wanted to try out and I, after listening to their band i was like dude this is amazing i can't make any excuses right yeah so i actually tried to do the tryout like on a voice memo or whatever it was i forgot and it just nothing was happening man and i couldn't i could barely breathe let alone you know oh, tr- try out for a freaking metal band as the vocalist and so i ended up like four or five days later he was checking in he was like hey man like where's the try you know are you gonna try out stuff like this and i was just being like super spotty i was just trying to <laughs> tell them that i was hurt and then finally I was like, Hey, look, like I have an injury in my ribs and I, I can't do the tryout right this second. Are you guys willing to like wait for me? And, and they were understanding about it for sure. But on their end, I'm sure they were like, what the fuck is going on with this guy? Yeah. <laughs> well, we just didn't, you know, we'd heard it all. We'd heard it all from all these people blowing smoke up our ass. So we we're just like, all right, well, if he gets it, he gets it. If not, no harm here. Like and, we'll and, keep on trucking. It's funny because that's the way that they were thinking about it. But on my end, I'm like, Pressed. I'm like, oh my god, I need to try out for this band. Oh my god, I have to do anything. I have to do anything. So I scheduled, I don't know, like a week out. I scheduled some studio time with my buddies in Fractured Frames up in North Carolina, and I just went. I sucked it up and I went. And I remember when I did my tryout, I was still kind of on the back end of the injury, the pain and stuff. But I just pushed through and did it as best as I could. And uh, I told the guys in the studio, I was like, you know, that cliche meme ain't much, but it's honest work. Right. (laughs) And I was like, we're going to send it off and hopefully these guys dig it. And so I sent it to Dalton and he was stoked because at that point he was like, okay, this guy's legit. Like he actually, he actually sent me a damn tryout. (laughs) So he was like, all right, man, we'll give us about 24 to 48 hours. I'm going to send it to the guys. We're all going to listen. We're going to get together and we're going to talk about it. I think it was like the next day. Uh, they get back to me or something like that. And at the time I had lived in Greenville, South Carolina, and they lived in Arkansas. Uh, he was in like central Arkansas at, at the time. How far away was like not? Nah, it was nah. like nine and a half hours or so. And so I think the next day Dalton hits me up and he was like, Hey man, let's copy everybody else in. We're going to do a FaceTime call. And I was like shitting myself because I was nervous. I wanted to get this position <laughs> and I didn't know, you know, when you do a tryout for something, you're like, imposter syndrome comes in hard because you're like okay i think it's good but i don't know if it's good enough for them like i i'm pretty sure i nailed it maybe i didn't nail it actually no i didn't nail it that part sucks man i shouldn't (laughs) i shouldn't even have sent this to them you know so long story short with that they get on the phone with me dalton was a little bit weird at first he was just trying not to like you know put all of his cards out everybody got onto the uh the facetime call and dalton was like hey man we just want to tell you a couple things ask you a couple questions and you know, so they asked me a couple things and then he was like, well, we have one more question for you. And then I just remember you were like, when do you want to make the trip out to Arkansas, man? And I was like, what? He was like, yeah, man, we want you to be the vocalist. And I was like, oh my God. I remember, I mean, I'm a sensitive guy, so I probably started crying. (laughs) (laughs) I'm pretty sure we have this recorded somewhere. We got to take it up. Yeah. (laughs) We do have it recorded somewhere and maybe we'll put it into a video someday. Yeah. Um, But yeah, I mean, the rest is history. And then Right after that, right after I joined the band, like literally like two weeks after COVID hit. Oh, shit. Uh, so we, you know, we had a tour plan and we were, you know, I was practicing, getting ready and everything. And um, unfortunately, we couldn't go on that tour. So it was about a year and a half of stuff that got canceled. Yeah. And we couldn't even make any plans. So, man, just imagine me getting into the band. We couldn't even announce it because we didn't have any music with me. We wanted to hit the ground running. 
And so for a year and a half, nobody knew I was in the band. No I one had a clue. It. I forgot about that. Yeah. And I, I remember sitting, talking to these guys like every single day, just being insecure about it, just getting in my head. I'm like, God, man, like I'm in this awesome band, but I can't tell anybody. It was horrible. Yeah. So, and, and nothing's happening in the industry. And you're just like, Fuck, and maybe, maybe they're going to break up. Maybe this is the end. It, this great opportunity. It could be gone. <laughs> it was the weirdest it was the weirdest dynamic for me, man, because these guys were already established, especially yeah. in the local scene. Everybody knew who they were. And so like everybody knew that levels needed a vocalist. So they were still getting tryout requests and stuff like that. Like even, I feel like after, even after we confirmed me as the vocalist, but we couldn't publicly yeah. confirm it because we yeah. wanted to hit the ground running with some music and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So it was literally like a year, year and a half to where we couldn't even say anything about me. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, we were just backlogging and planning on the back end. And then he finally drove out, made the drive, and in I April. The first thing I said to him when I saw him in per in real life, I was like, "Oh my God, you're real!" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah then, you're real, dude. Like this is it. And then yeah, from there we hit it off and tracked our first single together and uh, put that thing out, and then just kind of saw where it was going to go from there. Dope. Dope. How'd you guys get connected with uh, Sharp Tone? that you want me to, or you want to say it yeah i can go um <laughs> that, <laughs> that was um i guess it was really it, everything that led up to that was us getting a new producer and finding this new sound and writing the whole ep i mean the whole ep was already written and then our producer jonathan um just sent sent it off to sharp tone to one of their a and r guys sal and he liked it. I mean, he just, he heard our, our, the single that we wanted to release first. He heard that one. Um, I'm not sure if you've heard, has, have they sent you anything? I've okay. heard the whole EP. Yeah. Okay, oh, great. cool. Awesome. So, awesome. so, you know, you're familiar with breed then. Yeah. So we sent them breed with the music video and then they wanted to talk. So it was really, I think the music spoke for us really. Mm. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Nice and easy. So you've been sitting on this EP for, a, a long time now. <laughs> so, yeah. Some of these songs, uh, Breed and Realign and even Opium, uh, those songs are probably more than a year old. Yeah. Almost almost two years old now. Yeah. The, the newest ones are actually the ones we just released publicly. Was, was Siren. Yeah, yeah. Those are the newest ones. But I mean, I think some of the, uh, the even the older ones that are like a year old, they still, they still stand. They still stand yeah. the ground. Yeah. That's cool. EP is called Pulse. Where'd you come up with that title? It's the opening track. We had we had a couple different names that we were throwing around, and and nobody was resonating with the names. Um, I had one that I thought was phenomenal, but the the guys were like, "Yeah, it's not the vibe." And so we just, you know, sometimes your opinion gets you know vetoed, and you have to you have to run with it. Yeah. Uh, and so our producer was like, one day he was like, "Why don't?" It was Jonathan, right? I think it was Jonathan. Yeah, yeah. I think Jonathan was just like, "Guys, well, let's not overcomplicate it." He was like, why don't we just name it Pulse? And then the guys in the in the chat were like, yo, that's actually pretty cool. And then I was like, because of the single. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's cool. Let's go with it. And so literally it was like six, maybe like a year or six months worth of everyone thinking and thinking and thinking and pitching different names. <laughs> and then one day Jonathan was like, yo, let's just do this. And everyone was like, that's actually a great idea. Yeah, that's actually like a common. I never thought about that. That's a common denominator with <laughs> yeah. us in our band. Uh, Jonathan will, he'll be the voice of reason a lot. Like if we get stumped on something, he's like, Oh no, just do this. And we're like, damn it. Why didn't we think of that? <laughs> yeah. Jonathan is the honorary fifth member of the band. Yeah. We Even always, though he's our producer. He's just as important. <laughs> we yeah. queen him as the fifth member of the band all the time. Yeah. So nice. Nice, nice. What are, if any, like lyrical themes on the CP, or what are you drawing inspiration from uh, lyrically? Um, I would say there's really no theme. I, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I know that there's a lot of concept albums out there and concept yeah. EPs and stuff like that that are very cohesive and they all kind of keep the same theme. I really, it's just kind of a bullet points of 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 seasons in my life where i was and it's just kind of a, a mesh of all different yeah. types of, of um of lyrical content uh i wasn't trying to like pigeonhole myself into any certain you know topic or context or anything like that so i just i just really when we were in the studio with jonathan we would just these guys would nerd out making music and and just you know and then i would come and i would you know add my touch to it and i honestly just 
vibe out with the song and whatever it made me feel, I just started writing. So uh, as far as lyrical content, there's, you know, there's stuff about the world and yeah. pharmaceutical industry. And uh, there's stuff about me, you know, fighting my own internal, uh, I don't want to call them demons, but just internal BS. Sometimes. Yeah. 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 Imposter syndrome. Uh, I actually, I struggle with that a good bit. So uh, realign specifically is, is pretty much about that. Um, and then, you know, there's, there's various other topics and whatnot. And uh, I like to like, I like to make it ambiguous. I like to let everyone have their own interpretation of, of the songs that we have, yeah. but some of them are kind of, you know, on the nose. Greed is about fucking just. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I thought it was about running through the cornfields. And oh, oh, is that? Running right? the uh, that's yeah. funny. That's funny. EP's out February. Are you guys looking for big 2024 plans? I mean, you're heading back to South Carolina here, but you're gearing up for a big year. We this is kind of your coming out party, right? Like new label, yeah. new EP. Yeah, we just want to tour, man. Like we're we want like we don't want to headline. We've headlined lots and like we're ready to get out. We feel like we're a very strong support band for <laughs> these other more established bands. Like we just want to get out there on the road and like get this music on stage and let people hear it that want to hear it and be the best supporting band that we can be, you know, play some festivals. We've just been sitting dormant for a long time. Yeah. We've played shows here and there mm-hmm. um, and we've played lots of shows in the past, but we've really been sitting for a long time. So we are ready to play some shows you know, in 2024. Yeah. We're very, very eager. Um, we also have lots of music plans for 2024. Uh, we, Definitely the EP is not going to be the only thing musically that, that everyone hears for sure. Um, we probably can't talk about too much, but yeah, but there will be a lot more than just the EP in 2024. Yeah, there will be a lot more than just the EP. <laughs> uh, we're going to try and piggyback uh, off the EP pretty shortly after with, with new music. So be on the lookout for that. But uh, we're, we're definitely the, the sound change and the sound evolution is definitely going to be something that we're going for in 2024. Um, you know, songs that you hear on the EP might be completely different types of styles that you're going to hear on further music coming down the road, but we're always going to keep it with the levels roots, heavy, technical, whatever signature on it. Yeah. Yeah. Because of the way, like, I feel things are with like, you can just release singles on streaming platforms these days and not be beholden to like an album that fits together. Like you can experiment and be like, if, if we do a weird proggy pop song with metal flavor over here it doesn't matter it's a one-off and like we yeah. like it so like somebody will like it right like yeah just, right just another one for the discography right right yeah yeah it doesn't have to fit in this like 10 song package <laughs> We're super stoked. We're very excited because we feel like this is kind of our uh, our intro into the actual industry. I mean, we've you know we just put up Pulse and Siren Him both collectively got almost two hundred thousand views. Um, we think that we have something new coming to the industry. I mean, obviously every band is going to say that, but I, I feel like we we feel like we have something new, energetic. There's a lot of different aspects to our band. And uh, the the response has been amazing. People are graciously accepting us into the into the industry, which is it feels so amazing. The yeah. fans have been unbelievable, and uh, we just we really just want to hit the ground running. We want to befriend all the other bands that we come in contact with, and we just want to see where twenty twenty four and and beyond takes us. Man, we're mm. so excited. I I literally am living and counting. I'm living and counting down the days until the EP <laughs> drops. Like it's only a, a little bit, you know about a month and a half away but yeah. i just I, I cannot wait until the ep drops and just to see kind of where it falls on on people's ears you know yeah 
Thanks for listening to As the Story Grows. Our intro music was written and composed by Jeremy Hunt. The As the Story Grows theme is by Bob Nana. If you like what you hear, subscribe wherever you get your podcast and give us a rating and review. If you'd like to support the show financially, you can join us at patreon.com slash as the story grows. Be a part of our community and join the ongoing conversation over on Discord. If you enjoy this episode, share it on social media with your friends. Much appreciated, and thanks for listening. I never felt so young and alive as when I'm diving into a zoo. And now I'm learning as I listen along and the wheels are turning and I started a song. What good word and I'm gone. Never